guys I'm Justin Swanster welcome back to the YouTube channel I'm here at the house today because I am actually about to head on over to one of our contractors drop off some paperwork and then we're gonna go right on over to Cameron Johnson race cars because today is the day that we bring aftermath 2.0 my street outlaw no prep Kings build back home so I can go ahead and get the top of the hood fiberglass on get my shocks put on it from afterworks Ron he hooked us up for this year I can't wait to get him on there to see what this thing looks like I'm gonna steal a couple more parts off of Alcatraz 2.0 and then once we get that all completed we are gonna head on down to Speedy Truck World Mike Starvino so we can get wrapped head on up to Mooresville North Carolina so the car can get wired at Modern Racing and then we will be back out testing so anyways guys before we get this day started and before I head on over to camera I want to go ahead and show y'all what Slinky's been up to. I had a lot of people emailing me asking where Slinky has been. He has not been on the channel in the last couple weeks. He has just been working long hours, long days. So I do apologize for that. We are going to get Slinky back on the channel. Nothing has happened. Nothing is wrong. He is actually living on our property now. My property. He got his own little camper. Check that out. I finally came out here one night and he had the little thing rocking back and forth, but uh, he's probably in there sleeping. So we're going to go ahead, bang on the door real quick, try to get him out here and let's have us a little conversation. Wake your ass up. What? The channel wants to know where you've been. It's one o'clock. What are you still in pajamas for? I'm sleeping. I'm sick. You ain't sick. Get out of here. <laughs> no, don't do that fake ass cough. You wanna go get something to eat? You don't need one of those. I told you, quit smoking. <coughs> Shit's bad for your health. <coughs> That's alright. Alright guys, so because I've been doing a lot more vlogs lately, everybody knows, and I've been saying it a lot here lately, we are posting every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. That's three times a week. We are trying to do vlogs on Tuesday and Thursday. That makes it five videos a week. If y'all want more, y'all need to let me know. Drop a comment down below. Tell me you want more coverage, you want more footage, you want more content, and I guarantee that I will get it to you. One way or another, I will go days without sleep but I will get the coverage for y'all because without y'all I'm nobody and I appreciate each and every one of y'all so we started it in the last video we're gonna do it this video and we're gonna keep doing it every video we're gonna answer three questions if y'all have a question I want you to drop it down below on this video and I'm gonna go ahead and keep going every video I post from this day forward we are gonna answer three questions from the fans so let's get on into it question number one was when do you let go of the tranny brake the button is what they said but it's called the tranny brake when do you let go of the tranny brake as you see the tree to be able to go down the track so bracket racers uh you have pro racers i mean you got 500 tree you got a 400 tree it's all different but heads up racing there isn't like a a single bulb light that comes down and usually you leave on either the second or third light before it hits green so what i do is i do heads up racing so all three amber lights come on at the same time so what i do is is i go ahead and i try to stage the car as shallow as i can if you watch in my previous videos and i'm sure you're going to watch in the following videos if you ever see my brake lights go in and out that's because i'm pumping the brakes in the car i'm trying to get the car as shallow as possible into the beams so whenever I get into the beams and I set that second bulb, I smash that training brake like I ain't never smashed nothing in my life. I go ahead and slam the throttle down. When I see anything yellow, anything, it don't matter if it's a butterfly, a ladybug, or your sister over there in the staging lanes drooling over my car, it don't matter. But anything yellow, amber, I go ahead and drop the hammer so what I do is is I look up at the top bulb all the way at the top the top of the top bulb and we call this the five finger discount trust me I can guarantee I will always bet on myself that I will cut a better light than the next person beside me so whenever we're in the beams and we hit that training break we hit them with that five finger discount and BAM and we head on down through there and most of the time we get to win second question good question guys what bottle pressure and tire pressure do you run on the car before you make a hit? So a lot of people have been asking, 
uh, why do I purge out so much or is there a certain bottle pressure that we need to get at before we make our pass? The answer is yes. The air is not too good and say we don't want to hop the tune up with uh, giving the motor timing, we will leave with more bottle pressure or if the air is too good out and the motor is going to make more power, we will leave with less bottle pressure. But the average bottle pressure that I leave at is 900. So you'll see me in there purging it out and actually I'm going to try to get a video the next time I'm in the car as you can see what I look at which is my race pack dash and I try to purge the car down I try to get it as close to 900 898 900 whenever I let go of the button that thing drops about 50 pounds of pressure and then it probably drops right around 75 to 80 throughout the whole run but we have to have a consecutive and nice tune-up on the car so i gotta make sure that i do my job and i leave at the same bottle pressure every time if i get in there and jack it up and try to go less or more the tune-up changes from timing and all that and then that's when dad gets on my ass so i make sure i do my job he makes sure he does his job and we go ahead and try to get us a win next is what tire pressure a lot of people have been emailing me asking me about questions between the radial and the big tires what tire pressure we should run it all comes down to weight, guys. Uh, it matters what your car weighs. Uh, my car, instance, the radial tire car with me in it weighs 23.75. So I usually stay between 12 and a half and 13 pounds of tire pressure. We went and ran Pro 275. We had to put 25, or we had to weigh 2,515 pounds. So we had to put a lot of weight in the car. The car is heavier. We add tire pressure. We were running 14 to 14 and a quarter. So the radial setup is completely did it different. Uh, my dad's calling me right now. He's probably about to get on my ass. Hello. Hello. Yeah, yeah I can hear you now. Yeah, before you leave, phone real quick. I want you to walk inside and see if you push this floor down. Is that a fat joke? No, or, or I can too. I'm, I'm curious. I don't really see what made the floor buckle. That's what concerns me. I mean, is it just loose? I know the two two things broke away, and is that what caused it, or what pushed this floor up? And I'm not sure how I can push it back down to get it. You know, I got to get it to come down to get it welded back up. I got you. I, mean, I know the brackets broke without a doubt, both on both sides. I'll be over in a minute. I'm trying to shoot a video. Okay, and it get could it. be from it could be from the golf cart being hooked up maybe the weight of the golf cart pulling on it i don't know yeah all right i'll be over there in a second let me finish this segment right. and i'll get rolling okay bye before i was rudely interrupted uh i think i just said that wrong interrupt interrupted in, interrupted interrupted so uh tire pressure so it just matters what your weight is so now you got the radial set up down now we go to the big tires the big tire cars run a lot less uh tire pressure we could run from five pounds all the way up to six and a half it just matters how the track conditions are it matters what we're trying to do if we're trying to get more wheel speed you'll put more pressure to it it just it, it all has different varies but the average number you should be looking for it matters what your car weighs but going off of my cars my no prep car is 2600 pounds so we run between four and a half and five and a half pounds every once in a while we'll jack it up to six radial tire car with me in the car i'm at 2375 2400 so i go ahead and i run between 12 and a half 13. i may jack it up to 14 once i put a little bit more weight in it it just matters what you want to do you have to go out and test try to do different numbers see what's the best result for yourself oh my puppy. I need to get it. I just need to get it fixed, man. That's our new track dog, Diamond. That's my girl. What's up, baby? Well, now that we got the fat joke out of the way, we were able to check the trailer and and the floor does push back down. I just had just the right amount of weight to be able to push it back down. So uh, we're getting that fixed uh, this weekend. So we go ahead and get ready for this long haul. We're about to go all the way out to Tucson, Arizona. But for question number three, uh, I was asked, how long have I been racing? I've been racing all my life. I've been around it. My dad, he was a big time drag racer, but I started driving a car at age 14. I actually had to lie on my uh, NHRA license. It actually still says to this day that I'm two years older than what I am, but uh, I had to do that at that time so I could get my NHRA license. So I was able to run at uh, certain tracks and all that. I do not recommend that to anyone, but 
back then that's what I had to do so that was uh, 10 years ago I actually turned 24 this month I started when I was 14 I turned 24 February 23rd so if any of y'all are in the Tampa Bay area and y'all are wanting to hang out party or do whatever we are actually setting us up a little party spot and we're gonna go ahead and uh, bring in to the year of 24 for me and uh, have us a good time and hopefully 2020 is a good year all right enough of me talking I'll see y'all in a little bit. We're heading on over to Cameron Johnson Race Cars. I'm going to show y'all one final walk around of Aftermath 2.0 as it sits on the ground. And then we're going to go ahead and get things loaded up so we can bring the car back here, get stuff worked on, get the front end molded, and then go ahead and get the car wrapped. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so as you can see we're back over here at Cameron Johnson Race Cars. The tow truck is on the way to pick it up. Hi Eddie! Hi! Hi! Eddie's my new buddy. He's a phenomenal fabricator. Uh, he doesn't speak no English, but he knows how to get the job done and that's all that matters. But as you can see, Aftermath 2.0, god damn that thing looks good. I cannot wait till we get a wrap job on this car and actually get out there to go testing. Uh, man, that Cameron and the guys here, they did a phenomenal job. The zoomies, getting the motor set up in the car, transmission converter. I mean, that thing just looks good. It looks sick. Eddie, look good. Yeah. It looks good. Let me bring some boxing gloves over for your ass. Just cause, bang. I'm all fucking he's, right now. He said he's gonna bang. Eddie, show him the hammer. Show him the hammer. Only Eddie. did it one punch. Eddie. Show him the hammer. Show him the hammer. Look at the hammer. <laughs> she look like Thor, bro. Hey, he held his hand out like this. He goes like that. Show him the hammer one more time. Look that. <laughs> that thing got its own veins popping out. <laughs> what? JJ, you ever had your asshole lick? Yeah. What's it feel like? It's weird. But would you do it again? Would you let somebody do it again? It depends. The moment or? Gotta have a couple drinks or what? <laughs> I don't know, it's a weird feeling bro. The tow truck is here boys! JJ, you actually look like you know what you're doing. I know, bro. You ready? Yeah, just pick up the front end. JJ, watch. just pick up the front end and move the car over. Yeah, it's a good path. <laughs> <laughs> Cameron's like, damn, I'm glad this thing's finally leaving. Right there. Just watch that sensor and stuff up front, Ty. Hey, now. Alright guys, so we got the car on the back of the rollback. We are actually heading back to the house now to get it dropped off so I can go ahead and get what I need done to it and finish getting the front end completely molded. I might just possibly leave those Clecos there with that duct tape and see how long it'll last going 200 mile an hour. But we're getting out of here. We did get the car on, as you can see. And we're gonna go ahead and hopefully we have a safe trip. It's about a 30 minute ride down the road. Good thumbs up, JJ. Good luck. If it falls, it's on you. Damn, I need a new tire. 
Can't afford a new tire. Too much money into the race car. Hopefully JJ can get this thing back in. He don't really know how to drive. This is his first day. All right, guys, we got the car home. It is underneath the uh, car cover. We have already got it jacked up, got our measurements so we can get our, our shocks underneath the car, get everything ready. I can't thank Cameron Johnson and them enough for building a badass car for me for this year for our Street Outlaw No Prep King Season 4. If y'all enjoyed this video, throw me a like if you like throwing things, and let's make this the best racing channel out there. And we also got Swan Vlogs, and we also got Swan Cast. We're going to be doing a lot of things this year, and I would not be able to do this without y'all. So with that being said, stay tuned, smash that subscribe button, turn that notification on more videos are coming.